Hello now, everyone. Welcome to the brand new edition of To The Point. I'm Priti Mishra. And on today's show, I have with me Mr. S.M. Pradhan, Director General of the National Disaster Response Force. Mr. Pradhan, welcome to Ratsabha Television and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. So it's a dual challenge of COVID-19 and Cyclone Amphan. First, let's talk about the Cyclone. How well prepared are you to combat this exigency? Well, the cyclone, uh, the good thing is that we got a prediction uh, from the IMD well in time. And uh, since the last one week or 10 days, we have been preparing for this. So that lead time has helped. And so we could uh, we could uh, rustle up the forces required. And the good thing also, uh, the second good thing is that uh, both these states involved, the, the state uh, which are being impacted, Orissa and Bengal, they each have a battalion headquarters in uh, Calcutta in West Bengal and near Katak in, in, uh, in Orissa. So that helps because the infrastructural backup is already there, the equipment backup and the communication backup is there. So that probably has added to the uh, potential efficiency of the deployment. And uh, we have been deployed uh, timely and I think uh, in sufficient strength given the challenge. So help us understand the deployment plan in the states of Odisha and West Bengal. Uh, well, as things stand now, this could change, but as things stand now, uh, till the last, uh, when the report came in, uh, the uh, West Bengal government had asked for 19 teams. They are all deployed on ground and they are already delivering. They are doing the evacuation work and other awareness drives, etc., including the uh, awareness drives for the COVID situation in the cyclone context. Uh, in uh, in uh, Odisha, the uh, 15, uh, 16 teams now have been deployed on ground. And four teams are on standby. In in Bengal, two teams are on standby. So 19 plus 2, 21 there. And uh, in uh, Urissa, 15 plus 5, 20. So 41 teams between the two states are deployed. And uh, they have uh, hit the ground running, as I said. And they are already on the job. And the evacuation is going on right now. And they are, they are thickly into it. And it could, it could take the better part of the night or even go up till the morning tomorrow. How difficult is the evacuation uh, drive right now, sir? Uh, I would say evacuation is already al always a sensitive issue. Uh, we must remember that the majority of those who are being evacuated are poor people or low middle class people with uh, thatched roof huts or tin, tin uh, roof huts. Uh, and uh, they are also apprehensive about leaving behind their whatever little property they have. That is probably a lifetime's earning and they are not sure when they come back what will be the status of that or whether it'll, it would have just been destroyed through and through. So it is a it is a very sensitive uh, kind of a challenge for us. Uh, but the good thing is that uh, if it can be a, called a good thing, that both in Odisha and uh, in uh, West Bengal, there is a uh, there is a lot of experience in the people's mind and uh, in their ex lifetime experiences about cyclones. And let us not forget that 2019, the last year itself, uh, have has seen uh, several cyclones, but two of them were significant. One was very significant, the cyclone Foni, which uh, also uh, hit Bengal, not only Odisha, Odisha, of course, majorly, but also Bengal. And then there was Cyclone Bulbul, which actually landed more or less in the same place that we are predicting the Cyclone Amphan to land. So these areas were evacuated even then. So I think that experience will help. And that is helping now. Of course, yesterday it was a little more difficult. Uh, they were reluctant to go 24, more than 24 hours or 48 hours in advance. But now there is a lot of cooperation and uh, uh, I think this experience of the last years and uh, the the p potential of danger that they anticipate is helping us uh, in evacuating them uh, with, a, with a lot of cooperation, I must say. Yeah. And how are you coordinating with the state governments of Odisha and West Bengal? I think the coordination is of a very high order. Uh, as as uh, I was uh, you know telling elsewhere that uh, over the years the uh, the government of India as well as the state governments have come to come on the same page in terms of disasters. They have realized that disasters don't know borders. And if you think in terms of central government versus state government or vice versa, it's not going to work because disasters have no borders. Even international borders are not sacrosanct for disasters. It can happen in multiple countries. It can happen in multiple states in a national context. So it is very essential that the nation uh, as a whole cooperates and backs up. And especially the federal government and the state governments involved, they syn synergize. And I think that synergy is, is very much evident. Uh, it was evident in Cyclone Phony. It is evident now. And uh, there is uh, there is a lot of, uh, of course, discussions also. There are a lot of forums. You know, it was, uh, I would call it a red letter day in terms of disaster response, uh, the 18th of May, which was yesterday. 
when uh, the prime minister himself reviewed in the capacity of the chairperson of the national disaster management authority the home minister reviewed the situation and the cabinet secretary held the national crisis management committee meeting so all the three important uh, platforms at the highest level uh, were uh, were activated uh, for a single uh, event which is coming up so you can see the seriousness with which the central government is taking it and the seriousness with which they are also interfacing with the state governments both the state governments and i'm sure the state governments are taking it very seriously and there is a lot of synergy so i would say the coordination is of a very high order and right now as we speak the evacuation for example is happening with the help of ndrf the local police the sdrfs of the respective states the local district authorities the civil administration so it is it is actually a, a brilliant template of cooperative federalism and uh, we must be proud of this yes absolutely sir but we understand that during these testing times of natural disasters we develop shelter homes now this is a doubly challenging uh, time because of covid 19 how would you ensure that there's also social distancing while evacuating them and keeping them in shelter homes well that is a difficult part uh, uh, because the shelter homes some of the shelter homes have been now Uh, parceled out for as covid centers or covid quarantine centers so those numbers would be less uh, as far as the cyclone shelters numbers are concerned so for example uh, urissa has in excess of 1000 shelter homes cyclone shelter homes but several hundred of them are now uh, covid centers or quarantine centers so that much is less available in terms of cyclone shelters shelters if they are, they are required and same is the case with bengal but uh, the other thing other challenge is of course that if you want to maintain social distancing the capacity of a 1000 in a normal times in a cyclone shelter becomes probably half of that maybe 500 to 400 so that is a challenge but i think there are the the, the good thing is that because of the covid 19 situation uh, the schools and colleges are closed so they are now available as infrastructure provided they are sanitized and uh, the distancing is maintained as in a cyclone shelter so all that has happened because because of the lead time as i said this these preparations have been possible for the states also and central central government and the state governments have con con conferred on that and come to a conclusion that both more infrastructure can be made so overall i think we are prepared in terms of infrastructure including social distancing and hygiene uh, uh, regu regulations so during such times during such natural disasters when communication lines break down <coughs> how do you manage to communicate within the organization and with the people well within the organization the ndrf is very well prepared because it is a disaster response force so we cannot be dependent for communication on any other uh, any other agency so we carry our own communications uh, literally so we have what is called the quick deployment antenna and everything when everything is all connectivity is lost in a district or in a in a area cyclone uh, affected area we set up our own communication which is a closed loop channel and we can uh, i can even video uh, converse with uh, my people on ground live i can uh, do whatsapp calls uh, you know because it's it's our own uh, closed uh, uh, loop system so that way ndrf is i would say well prepared for any communication breakdown but as far as the district administration is concerned uh, i think the district police has wireless sets and now many of the district police uh, uh, establishments have realized that the wireless sets if the antennas are antenna are removed well in time then they can be set up immediately after the cyclone and the wireless can uh, the vhf can start running up and be up and running all these uh, you can say uh, uh, all these uh, makeshift arrangements are also working well and it uh, it worked well in this time of cyclone phony but uh, the other good thing is that uh, because of the experiences of such cyclones Uh, the department of telecommunication government of india the department of power they have also primed themselves and uh, organized in such a way that uh, those mistakes of uh, other other times are not repeated so what was the problem in cyclone phony in cyclone phony uh, the problem was that uh, while the telephone uh, btss were fine the towers were also fine the generators were not there right because it had not been thought of but now this time there has been uh, arrangement of gensets for all the uh, all the uh, telecom uh, bts transmitter transmission points so that uh, in all likelihood the telephone system will be up and running within a few hours or if not a few days uh, which will be a great saving grace because when people are able to be connected then uh, the there is lot of a uh, uh, lot of uh, dilution in the tension and the anxiety 
maybe after that uh, the power can come up and because because of the readiness of uh, the power ministry also in terms of uh, uh, backup arrangements generators etc even for power i think uh, there is a there is a good level of preparation for both power cut as well as uh, 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 destruction of uh, communicate connectivity i think the level of preparation is of a high order and uh, combined with the ndrf's uh, own uh, communication plans uh, i think even in uh, this devastating kind of a cyclone scenario we should be uh, bouncing back in terms of communication and power and connectivity fairly quickly so how have we evolved how are we leveraging technological tools in such testing times well uh, ndrf for example is a very equipment driven force uh, we have our own communication technology we have our own uh, uh, paraphernalia in terms of uh, say uh, gas cutters uh, plasma cutters which were used very extensively because last time in cyclone phony all the electrical lines and the poles were devastated yes. and the poles had to be then cut from the ground up so that new poles could be erected and that was a very tough ask but uh, because of the plasma cutters which came from calcutta at the ndrf unit that saved the day for a lot of a lot of days before the other teams and gangs uh, arrived from other states to odisha so yes we are prepared and as we said we, we are equipment driven and we have all the wherewithal uh in terms of equipment and technology uh to to face the cyclone so and how have been uh, the drive so far in terms of making people aware in odisha and west bengal uh the awareness as i said uh, earlier uh, to you another question of yours that, that there is a high level of awareness in terms of how to face a cyclone so they are willing to go to, go to uh, cyclone shelters they are go- willing to listen to Uh, the government uh, agencies uh, as to the uh, uh, you know the pros and cons of uh, not being uh, uh, open or be uh, be exposed to the cyclone situation and they are also very uh, compliant in terms of uh, how to stay and uh, continue living uh, temporarily for some time till their uh, their houses are restored in cyclone shelter so it is a disruption of their lives but uh, i think uh, the awareness is very of a very high order the second awareness this time is a little special they have to be aware of the covid-19 danger also uh, i would say that the drives uh, by the uh, awareness drives and the ic drives by the states and the central government about covid-19 and uh, precautions about uh, hygiene and uh, social distancing has uh, actually is now visible in the uh, on the ground level also the villagers are also very aware as to what to do and what not to do so i think Uh, the overall the preparation is good the awareness is of a high order but uh, i think it's also tough to always expect the uh, most uh, disciplined uh, uh, behavior from the ch- from the villagers because they are, they are they are under multiple stress so yes the regulatory agencies will have to do their bit and continue to cooperate and uh, you know guide the villagers from time to time uh, because yes it's a stressful time and in stress people can uh, people can make mistakes and even the best of uh, guidelines of uh, social distancing may go go kaput but yes uh, i would say that with some sensitivity and with some guidance from the government agencies and the state government uh, administrations uh, district administration i think even that should be the doable thing mr pradhan uh, help us understand how different is this cyclone from cyclone phony or bulbul or hudhud or falin that we saw in recent times uh you know it is quite different because uh, this is only the second super cyclone in bay of bengal after two decades 1999 was a super cyclone and this is a super cyclone there has never been a super cyclone in between super cyclones have happened in the arabian sea but in the bay of bengal this is the second super cyclone in independent india's history so yes it's very different it is uh, higher than the uh, cyclone phony and uh, uh, you could say that bulbul and falin don't compare with this at all so it's a it's a massive uh, weather phenomenon uh, in terms of uh, a phenomenon which is going to impact land uh, but uh, i would say that uh, by the time it makes landfall though sometime it will come to the category of cyclone phony it will be an extremely severe cyclone uh, category which is on par with phony so with the equally devastating potential so if you compare it with phony in terms of landfall i think they are very comparable and uh, the destruction potential will be almost similar 
And also, sir, before we talk about uh, COVID-19 pandemic, your take on the resilience of these cyclone hit areas? Uh, I would go back a little bit in time about the resilience. You know, from the three uh, disasters that happened earlier, we have learned a lot. The three disasters which happened in between 99 and 2004. The first one was the super cyclone in 99 in Odisha, similar to what is going to happen tomorrow. Uh, the 2001 Bhuj earthquake and uh, the 2004 tsunami. In all these, we lost thousands of lives and many were, are still missing, especially in the tsunami. I think we learned from that and it's been a steep learning curve after that. We enacted a 2005 Disaster Management Act and uh, then we started building up resilience. Uh, I think now even the urban planning that is being done is in terms of how to handle disasters. Uh, like uh, things like uh, underground cabling uh, for electricity and uh, houses which are disaster resilient, infrastructure which is disaster resilient, roads which are disaster resilient. All this is now part of the planning process. And I must say, more than anything else, the people are now mentally resilient. That makes a big difference. People are aware that this is going to happen. Cyclones, floods are part of natural phenomenon that we cannot. So this is the hazard. But the hazard does not turn into a disaster is the responsibility of governance. Hazards are there. If we are in the sub-Himalayan area, the hazard of earthquake is real. But if we can minimize the damage and don't allow that hazard to turn into a disaster, that is a governance responsibility. So now the government of India, I'm, I'm very uh, happy to say, and I have no hesitation in saying that the present government has put disaster response smack in the middle of governance as mainstream part of governance. And that is the, I, th I think the litmus test of good governance because when you put that situation where people are in maximum distress as the center of governance, then everything else revolves around it. And in normal times, your governance is of a high order. So I think this, is, this is, has built up resilience uh, in the minds of the people. So apart from infrastructural resilience, there is resilience in the minds of people and there is resilience in governance. So these three are combining very well and I think that is, it is icing on the cake that uh, the government of India, present government of India has piloted what is called the coalition of disaster resilient infrastructure. This is a coalition across the world and the pilot country is the government of India. So you can see resilience is very much part of our agenda, top of our agenda. And I think we are doing well in that direction as the planning goes ahead uh, and we go ahead into the next couple of decades. I think disaster resilient infrastructure and disaster resilient people will be uh, very much a feature of India and India could actually be a leader in disaster resilience in the times to come. Absolutely, sir. And on that note, I'd just like to ask a few questions on COVID-19 pandemic. How is the NDRF carrying out coronavirus prevention exercise? Well, the NDRF is basically uh, in a support role uh, in the co coronavirus uh, pandemic. Uh, the medical workers are the front line everywhere in the states also. But uh, yes, uh, we are in supporting role. We are helping in the quarantine centers. We are doing capacity building. For example, I can tell you that uh, when the, in the initial days of the COVID-19, when the cases were actually coming through the airport and seaports, we trained uh, more than 60, uh, 50,000 personnel of the CISF, of the, all the outward facing, the airport staff, etc., and the seaport staff. Almost 30 to 40,000 were trained in a matter of a couple of months uh, to handle outward, uh, uh, inward passengers and uh, fr from, a, from a point of view of in uh, entry into the country. And uh, the good thing is that uh, the, the fear psychosis initially in the, say, the, uh, the immigration staff, they were worried on the first day when the first flight of China was coming from Wuhan, how to go about it. That day we were, we hit the airport, my DIG and the team went there and actually explained the whole thing to them and said it is not a big deal if you follow the precautions. So that set the tone and we trained uh, almost in every airport and every seaport and every land port across the country in multiples of thousands. So this is the kind of job we are doing. To come back to uh, the latest things that we are doing, in, uh, for, for example, in Bihar, in all the red zone districts, we are doing the sanitizing work. We are helping in the medical checkup also. We are on standby. And we go and that accompany the medical teams uh, for medical checkup in the villages. So we are doing a support service. And that is as it should be because we are not medical first responders. But the good thing is that we are trained in medical first response and 
pre hospital training because that is what disasters entail so this all uh, this skill level is helping us being a very effective support system and lastly mr pradhan with monsoon around the corner how is the ndrf preparing to face a twin challenge again of corona virus and monsoon put together well uh, even before the there was any news of the cyclone or prediction of the cyclone we had planned for the monsoons because that is our bread and butter floods are 60% of the disaster uh, uh, you know uh, challenge in india 60% 60% of uh, india is affected by floods so that's why we always always plan for that well in advance and this was no different this time but this time the difference big difference was it will it would have been floods in the time of covid Right. so while we were planning for floods in the time of covid there ha- there happened the cyclone in the time of covid right. so this 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 is a this is a this is a uh, i would take it uh, in in an optimistic way as uh, another challenge to handle and experience gets gain experience from so we have already planned for the monsoons of course uh, it is going to be difficult uh, it is very obvious that uh, it could be possible that the f- troops when they go to a village many of the villages may be covid affected True. they may have to carry a child or a old uh, elderly person who is covid affected True. the troops are aware of this and they are uh, they are aware that there are uh, inherent dangers and uh, threats but uh, we cannot say no to rescue rescue is our is our uh, is a lifeline Le- rescue is our primary function so we will do it uh, we are uh, pre- preparing ourselves adequately for that with the kind of costumes that we have to wear the gear that we have to wear the head gear that is required the you know the mask type of mask water waterproof mask the visors the uh, caps which are have to be waterproof maybe uh, t- top uh, top wear that has to be waterproof and also could prevent any uh, any virus uh, entering your body so all that is being worked out uh, but as i said i'll be first to admit that this is a very new challenge we don't know the shape of the beast so we have to learn as we go and i hope uh, whatever learning we have had in the past few years we'll put to good use and uh, still be able to tackle the twin challenge of covid-19 and floods point well taken mr pradhan you have an arduous task at your hand and also your organization all the best for all your endeavors thank you so much for talking broad sabatal thank, thank you so much